Good evening. Sorry, Whitney. <laughs> I just happened to look at you because you turned around. <laughs> Welcome to Grace Church of Harmony. Uh, we are glad that you are here. Uh, we hope that uh, you had enough to eat downstairs. And uh, we are looking forward to, uh, I guess, to being filled, having our stomachs full, uh, but also be filling, being filled by the Word of God. So that's what we're going to do here uh, tonight. So let's pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the work that went into the delicious food downstairs. Uh, we, we thank you for all of the workers. We thank you for everyone who is here. Father, work uh, through your word as we praise your name and as we look at your word, and we pray that you would give us rest uh, through Jesus. And we ask all of this in his name. Amen. We're going to be singing out of the hymnal, so if you want to grab the blue hymnal in front of you and just turn to the second hymn in there, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and go ahead and please stand once you find... Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place. And I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Brought me with his precious blood Oh, to grace how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, well, this is, this is new. It's interesting uh, to be here on Wednesday at dinner time. And to, uh, I was most nervous about eating spaghetti before uh, coming, standing before all of you. Uh, so if you see any spots, don't point them out <laughs> until later. But we've been praying that by being, being able to come here uh, tonight uh, for dinner instead of lunch, that God would provide you some rest through uh, the food that we had downstairs, but also by hearing from the Word of God. Uh, and if you'd like to open your Bible uh, in the pew in front of you, or if you just want to listen, that's okay too. But we will be in Matthew chapter 11, verse, starting in verse 25. Some background to where this is. Uh, Jesus has just finished declaring woes to three cities uh, in Israel. And those are uh, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Jesus had been, up to this point, casting out demons, healing people. He had raised a little girl from the dead. He had been healing people who were blind, uh, people who were paralyzed. And despite all of this, Jesus pronounces woe on these three cities because they saw all of these things, enjoyed the spectacle, but still rejected Jesus. And so Jesus was proclaiming that they need to be ready for despair and misery because that is what is coming for them if they are the, rejecting him because they have rejected God. And so that is where we pick up beginning in verse 25. Matthew writes, At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, 
and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so here in this passage, Jesus is teaching about God the Father, he is teaching about the Father's plan, and he is teaching about himself as well. Now, the Jewish people would have known that God the Father is Yahweh, the one who made covenants with them, who had rescued them, uh, who had provided for them for thousands of years after choosing them as his people, and that he was the ruler over everything on earth, everything in the heavens, everything under the earth, and he had a plan, which is important because that shows that God was not just hands-off. He didn't make things and just let it be, or he didn't react to what was going on, but God was sovereign throughout history, as well as he was over all of everything uh, in creation. And Jesus points out that this plan involves Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, who is fully man and fully God. The Father has given, Jesus says, authority to him, to Jesus, over everything. He's given him authority over power, authority over wisdom, authority over heaven and earth. In fact, if you can think of anything... Uh, that thing is under the authority of Jesus Christ himself. And this is foundational to what Jesus is teaching. Now, this is foundational to what Jesus is offering and calling people to. And so we look at the rest of what he is offering, and we know that, uh, as we look at that later, we know that Jesus has power and authority. I'm not sure uh, how many of you... uh, Well, if you were involved in student council, this is not a dig at anything involving student council. Uh, But my student council in my high school didn't have much power. And so people would go up for elections and they would say, we're going to have more time outside. You'll be able to leave for lunch and we'll get rid of some homework and, you know, this and that. And they'd promise all these other things. The truth is they had no power. In fact, the biggest change over the four years that I was in high school was uh, they took what we had, a bucket of ketchup with a ladle, and they installed a pump. And so that was the thing that uh, when I was graduating, they bragged about the big change that they had made. But so that wasn't too much of a change. There wasn't too much authority, but Jesus has all authority. So when he makes a promise, he has the ability to keep it, and he has the ability to make sure that it is fulfilled. And so this is why uh, it is so important that Jesus is the one who is offering this. And in addition, Jesus makes the claim here that he is God. And the only way that someone can truly know God the Father is if they know him as well. You can know some things about the Father. Paul says that you can see that he has created things. You can see some of his characteristics. But if you really want to know God the Father, to have a relationship with him, you need to know who his son Jesus is, the one that he sent to teach us about him. And so this is why Jesus says, come to me, come to Jesus not just come to God or teaching about who God is, but Jesus is the one who will provide all of this. So Jesus has all authority and all power, and he is the one who needs to bring you to the Father, not just Jesus doesn't bring us to the Father and vouch for us and say, well, this is a pretty good guy, this is a pretty good girl, you can, you can trust him or her. Uh, Jesus doesn't teach us etiquette about how to behave when we go to God. Uh, Jesus isn't just telling us things about God that we might not be able to find anywhere. But Paul, when he writes to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians, he writes, God, the Father, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And so Jesus isn't just bringing us along or vouching for us, but the work that he does and what he offers is reconciliation with God, with the Creator, forgiveness of our sins, and giving us the righteousness of Jesus that Jesus has through being God and also through the obedience that he demonstrated when he was on earth. And so we look at who Jesus is calling in this passage. It's not the wise, it's not the the understanding, but he says it is those who are like children. Those, he doesn't call those who are self-sufficient, those who believe they haven't figured out, those who have the answer, who deem themselves wise. But instead, Jesus calls those who are dependent, those who love to be taught by God and know that they are reliant on him. 
And so this is the difference, uh, if you remember, between the Pharisee who lifted his eyes to heaven and said, oh Lord, I'm glad I'm not like them, talking about the tax collector. And instead, Jesus is calling to the tax collector who lifted his eyes to heaven and said, oh Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And so Jesus is calling those who labor and those who are heavy laden. Those who labor, who have been tired, and who have exhausted themselves through toiling, through working and striving to accomplish whatever work that they have, uh, through trying to accomplish whatever life has thrown at them, and overburdened and heavy laden with demands. The demands that we feel from knowing that we aren't perfect, from knowing that we have certain things that we have to do that we are unable to do, responsibilities. Uh, We have relationships that we have that weigh upon us. We have all of these demands that we feel inside of us and that other people place upon us. And so Jesus is calling you if you are tired of striving and toiling, if you are worn out, and if you realize that you don't have it in you to accomplish what is necessary. So Jesus is asking, are you tired? Are Are you thinking that right now that you cannot wait to get home tonight? Put your feet up and just be at home for the rest of the night because there will be a time of rest. Are you looking at the calendar and thinking, I wish it were Friday so that I could go home for the weekend instead of having two more days at work? Are you tired? Are you tired of, of, uh, of the demands that are placed upon you? Are you tired of feeling expectations? I know that we feel expectations when any time there's a holiday The kids have a shirt that they will wear at school. They have a party that we need to provide party favors for. There's all sorts of fancy things that uh, is part of being involved with the school. And so I know that I feel these things, even though I I guess I just look and help out. Amanda Amanda does all of that stuff. But these are some of the burdens that we have. We have expectations from our kids that we need to take care of them and be be there for them. It's not bad. But it is an expectation that we are there to take care of them. We have expectations in, placed on us from our parents because we love them. We want to take care of them. We have expectations placed on us from work, from school, from friends. And this all adds to a sense of guilt. A guilt that we are not able to do what it is that we want to do. The guilt of knowing that we've made mistakes The guilt of knowing that there are things that we wish we could take back and not do, and that there are things that we wish we would have done, but only we didn't. I think sometimes when I think of Awana, I think of our kids not wanting to memorize Bible verses. (laughs) Or when they can't come home after Awana and they're crying because they didn't get their Bible verse checked off. And part of the reason was because there were a lot of things going on, and maybe as a family we didn't get around to practicing Bible verses. Or maybe that's an illness. Maybe there's a physical illness that you have. Or maybe there's a physical illness that someone you love is struggling through. All of these are weighty. All of these are exhausting and tiring. And the Bible says that these, all of these things are symptoms of our big problem, which is sin. The fact that we live in a sinful world and the fact that we sin. Instead, the Bible says the world is broken, that we are broken, we can't fix it even if we had 48 hours in a day because it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of the fact that we are unable to do that because we have been separated from our Creator, the one who designed us, who knows us, who designed us so that we could have a relationship with Him and behold His glory and He could bless us and we could enjoy the life that He has with nothing else getting in the way. But Adam and Eve sinned. They chose their own way instead of choosing God's way because they thought they knew better. And it's something that we continue to do. And so we try so desperately to fill the brokenness that we have, but we can't. So Jesus calls us, those who, are, who labor, those who are heavy laden, those who feel like children without anywhere to go that can take care of anything. And Jesus says, are you exhausted and crushed? Are you powerless? Do you realize there's always one more thing for you to do? One more thing to get to? One more thing that you wish you hadn't done? One more person? Then come to me. And so Jesus offers rest. Rest at the end when we know that he will make everything perfect and wipe our tears away and we will see him forever and we will be made perfect in body and in relationship with each other and being able to behold him and also until that day because Jesus says, pick up your yoke. The rest that he gives us is not a rest completely from work because he didn't say a hammock or a pillow, but he said, come take my yoke. As you are working, 
I will take care of you. I will take away the burden of your sins, your guilt, your shame, and your frustration. I will remind you that I am always here with you. And life may be uncomfortable, difficult, and trying, but if you follow me, if you rely on me, if you trust me and learn from me, then I will give you rest that comes with purposeful living, with purposeful, worthwhile toiling, and the promise of rest for all of eternity. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give us this rest, that you would give, it, give that to us through Jesus. You said that uh, you've accomplished it for us. Jesus accomplished it on the cross and through his resurrection. So, Father, we ask you to give that to us today. Build us up uh, in you because uh, you have everything that we, we need, anything we, are, we will ever need. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs>